Timestamps are a very unique feature and not a lot of people know how to make them. And that's for very good reason, because they're not that easy to make. But in this video, I'm going to break down how to make timestamps and the many different styles and formatting you can create. The great thing about these timestamps is for me, it says two days ago. But if you're in somewhere like Australia, for example, where it's probably a day later by now, this would say something like three days ago. So it depends where you're from and what your time zone is. I'll give you a quick preview here. So if I hover over this one here, this is what they look like. There are many more that I'm going to show you in a bit. So this one says two days ago. And if you hover over it, it says September 22nd, 8.42 p.m. And I can confirm that it's two days ago because it's currently the 24th. So this one is a relative timestamp. So this basically says in how many days or how many days ago something happened. Or if it was just a few hours ago, then a few hours ago. And this one is announcing something that will happen in the future. So if you want to find out how to make those and many different styles and formats of timestamps, let's find out how to do it. So to make timestamps like these, we are going to use a website that will make a Unix timestamp. If you don't know what that is, don't worry because I didn't know before this either. If it sounds too complicated, don't worry, it's not, I'm just going to break it down for you. We're going to use a generator that will convert a time to a timestamp. And then we're going to take that timestamp and convert it into a Discord timestamp. So, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to head to this website in the description. This is where we're going to make the, however you pronounce that, timestamp. So go to the description and click the link and it will take you to this website. And there should be many websites that do the same thing. I'm just using this one because I prefer the layout of this. So when you load up the website, it should automatically input your time into this. If you're using a VPN or something, it might mess around with it. But you basically want to enter your time here. So the year is 2021, it's September, and it's the 24th. Now obviously you're going to want to know what time stamp you want. So I'm going to start off by making one that says something like in five days. Let's say I'm announced something and there's a countdown that I will make. This is how we're going to do it. I'm going to change the date to the 29th. Because hypothetically I'll be releasing something or announcing something at the 29th. So this is in a 24 hour format. So if it's like 3pm, you're going to want to type 15. So let's say I'm releasing it at 4pm. So that would be 16. So exactly 4pm on the 29th, which is in 5 days. And then I'm going to click this button here that says convert. And here we go. So what can we see here? So this is what we're going to want to copy. But I'm going to explain all this stuff first. If you go here, this is my time zone. So this should be your time zone here. So in my case, because it's daylight saving at the moment, this is when I'm going to want to look at. And this should change depending on your time zone. And this one here, relative, this says in five days. So the first style we're going to make is when that says in five days. That's the format of the timestamp we're going to make first. So it will say in five days. So anyway, what we're going to want to do is highlight the Unix timestamp string here and right click and copy. And I'm going to put something on screen now that will show you all the different date formats that I'm going to go through. So I'm going to start with relative, this one here. So to make that, you're going to want to head into your server or somewhere. And we're going to paste in the Unix timestamp we just made. I'm going to zoom in a bit so it's easy to see. I'm going to type this symbol here. It's like a, a, a it's like an arrow pointing left. A left carrot, I think it's called. And we're going to want to type a lowercase t and put a colon and the string we just made. And we're going to want to type colon again. And now what you type here will depend on what timestamp you want. So I'm going to put a capital R because I want the relative timestamp, which will say in five days rather than September 29th, for example. And let's end that with another arrow. This time pointing the other way, pointing right. And I'm going to send it. There we go. So, this is the timestamp we just made in five days. Now, if you hover over this, it will come up with the long date, as it would if you hover over the message date. So, Wednesday, September 29th at 4 pm. It's currently the 24th. And in five days, it will be the 29th. So, it works all fine. Now, if you're on iOS, I don't know about other mobile platforms, but on iOS, if you actually click this timestamp, or if you press the timestamp, it will actually come up at the top, which is very nice. I didn't think it would because usually when you have to hover over stuff on desktop, that functionality does not work on mobile. But in this case it does, which is a very nice thing. So this will work on desktop and iOS. Other platforms, I do not know. If you like making embeds and you want to put timestamps, it will work. So how you use timestamps is up to you and which formatting you use is also up to you. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, I will see you next time.